My brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm sure we can picture Christ this morning walking into the temple and causing a little problems. You see, he has gone to Jerusalem. It's the Passover. When all those of the Jewish faith gather together at this place, at the temple of God, to remember God's gift and how God rescued them from their bondage in Egypt. So Jesus gets to the temple and he finds in the temple these money changers, these people who are selling cattle and sheep and doves because people would come from miles around from great distances and they didn't come with their, with their animals to sacrifice. They would have to buy them there. And the money changers, they had Roman currency, but they had to exchange it for the temple money. So there was those who would make the exchange. And, and what happened is these commerce people, these people that sold this stuff, was outside the temple and it slowly kind of moved in to closer to the temple and, and even closer and then inside the temple. So Jesus came to celebrate the Passover, and he found this situation, and he got angry, and he got upset. But I think what we need to think about this morning is to recognize that Christ did get upset, that Christ did get angry, and he, he expressed that. But what he also did what he also did is when this took place and the religious leaders who were upset with him because, to be honest with you, they got a little kickback, you know, from the money changers and, and those who were there. They got, a, they got a little money, you know. And so they were upset with Jesus that he got upset. And they said, why did you do this? Why did you go about doing this? Give us a sign that tells us that you have a right to do this. And Jesus replies and he says, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. What Jesus is talking about and what he is predicting not only to the religious leaders, but to his disciples, is he is predicting his death. He is predicting what his, and he is sharing with them his mission, what he has come into this world to do. Let's think about that word mission for a little bit. That word is thrown about very, uh, a lot in, in, in today's world. I mean, through our government, they have a mission, uh, through other organizations. So I want to give you a little test this morning, a little quiz. I want you to tell me what is the mission of the Redwood, not Redwood, excuse me, that's where I came from as Redwood before I moved, from the Red Wing, what is the mission of the Red Wing area food shelf? What is the mission of that shelf? I can't hear you, no. Help people, provide food for people who are in need. Um, I was here last night and I walked down the hallway and you have your horn of plenty out in the end of the hallway there and it's filled with things and I'm assuming that that's going to go to the food shelf, you know, and you're still, and, and March is food shelf month, so I'm sure a lot of churches in town and maybe a lot. So the mission of the food shelf that you have here in Red Wing is to provide food for those who find themselves in need. Okay? Very good answer. So far, you, you're getting an A. <laughs> Excuse me. It, either I have to get a bigger ear or something here. There we go. Um, second one. What is the mission? What is the mission of the Salvation Army? Help people in need? Uh, provide, last night someone said provide clothing, you know, if you go to the furniture for those people in need at, at a reasonable price. 
Uh, also to provide meals in some locations that they provide meals. Uh, they also share the gospel. Correct? That's, that's correct. Well, that's the mission of those two organizations, and we could go on and on. The reason I wanted you to think about that is because I want you to think about what Jesus said. He is talking about his mission, that he is going to die. And he is saying that you will no longer need sacrifices, but that he is the one who has come, and his mission is to teach the truths of God. He is the one who is going to go to the cross and die for the sins of God's people, your sins and my sins, and he is going to mend the broken relationship that existed between God and his people because they couldn't follow and they couldn't um, com uh, you know, follow and, and uh, the, the Ten Commandments completely and perfectly. You know, we just heard them this morning in our first reading. We, it, though that law that God had given to Moses and to his people is something that we cannot live perfectly in. I mean, we can't even get by the first one. Now, I remember my confirmation years, which is several years ago. I had the little blue Luther's catechism, you know, and it says, the first commandment is, I am the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods before me. What does this mean? We should fear, trust, and love God. None of you can get by that one. I can't either. Because there's always something that we put before God. There's something that we worship before God. And that worship and, and sometimes comes back in it, and, and it'll recur. I had a friend in high school by the name of Jim who had the, the most gorgeous Chevy Camaro. Oh, it was a beautiful Chevy Camaro. I wanted a car like that so bad. I still do. <laughs> I can't afford it, but I still do. It was a gorgeous car. I worshiped that car. He let me ride with him in that car. Can you see where maybe that car was far more important? And even, even now it comes back to bite me a little bit because I think, oh, I would love to have a car like that. God is not number one. So we, we do place idols before God, and we make those idols a part of our lives. But Christ came. His mission was to mend that broken relationship by going to the cross and dying and fulfilling the law for us. That was his mission. I heard this morning, as John spoke and gave the announcements, that you here at First Lutheran and Red Wing are in the process of figuring out your mission. I've seen those congregational site profiles. They're not maybe the most enjoyable things to fill out. But what you're doing now in the process of being in interim is you as a congregation are trying to figure out what is our mission in Red Wing and in this world and what characteristics and what talents in a pastor will help us in that mission. So you're about a mission as well. You know, that mission has, that's part of your mission. Another part of your mission is to, is to hear that word again and again about God's love for you, how God sent his son into the world we hear about that in so many different ways. We hear this, this message of God's love for us, the fact that we have eternal life, that Christ has defeated death, and that we are confronted with our sinfulness each and every time we gather together for worship. We did it this morning. We heard God say, you're forgiven and I love you. And we hear that word of hope, that word of hope that comes to us because that is the mission of Christ is to proclaim to us the fact that he is God's only son that he died on the cross for us and we live as a people of hope and a people of life 
Our mission is to drink that in. Our mission is to hear it over and over again as you come to worship, as you have been in Sunday school, as you've been in confirmation, as you've been in Bible study, to hear of God's love, how that God's love has touched you. You know, there's many times in the Bible studies that I led of how I heard how God touched, how God touched that individual in a personal way, going back to what Hannah held, has helped us to understand. How God's love has touched us. You keep hearing it, and, and you say, well, that's the, that's the message that you hear over and over and over and over again. And it bears repeating that we need to hear the fact of what Christ has done for us. And we also need to hear that part of our mission as Christians and as followers of Christ is to be his servant. And we hear that again and again and again as well. Each and every one of you has a mission as a disciple of Christ. I remember sitting across from a, the table from a woman who told me that she had done her duty as Sunday school teacher, that she taught Sunday school while her children were young, and that she was done teaching Sunday school. And I looked that woman in the eye and I said to her, Mom, there is somebody teaching your grandchildren about the love of God. Now, I didn't convince my mother, but in her years as she got older, my mom passed away about four years ago at the age of 87. My mom made those baptismal little banners for each one who was baptized at church. So my mom maybe took my advice as a son or my words as a son to heart but everybody has a mission everybody has has something that they can do it's is giving you know we talk about giving time talents and our resources do you have that on a sunday stewardship sunday pledge sunday whatever it's called you have to fill out the sheet and you know, say i'll do this you know and i'll i'll lead services i'll be a communion assistant i'll sing in the choir whatever it may be But you do, there is a mission that you are to share with each other. And then people say, well, you know, how do I know what to do? Well, I think the last time I here, I was talking about prayer, wasn't I? Well, guess what? I think the ways by which we find out what our mission is, I think the ways that you as a congregation are finding out what your mission is, is you as a congregation collectively and together, pray. And you as individuals need to pray as well. We need to pray and say, Dear God, please give to, to us and to me the, the, the guidance so I know what you want me to do in this world. What is my mission? We have needs. We have needs. I mean, if Christ was the one who prayed and went off and prayed, and there's many examples of that, you know full well that we need to do it as well. Because it's a time when we converse with God. It's a time when we stand here and we pray God, we speak the words to God, we say thank you God, we give him praise, and we explain to him that we want to be committed to him, and we also say, dear God, I have a need to know, and I have a need for you to help me. And please guide me. It reminds me of this young boy in church that was kind of, you know, he was kind of boisterous and he was maybe not being so quiet, you know. <laughs> and uh, nobody in the congregation really did anything about it, you know. But his dad was getting upset and a little irritated. And, and so he grabbed him and he was walking out, you know, and nobody in the congregation really said anything. Until all of a sudden the little boy said, Please pray for me. <laughs> the little boy had a need. The little boy had a need. He knew what was coming. 
Well, we have needs as well. We just say, dear God, please provide for us. And I, I, I think of you and I pray for you as a congregation. I pray that God provides for you that direction as well as you are in this process, which is a challenging process, not a bad process, but a challenging process. Because you want to know what is God's desire for you. And you need direction and you need help. That's exactly what three gentlemen found themselves in. Joe and Bob and Dave were out hiking in the wilderness. And they, became, they came upon the, 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 the trail ended and where it ended was a large raging river that they had to cross. But there was no way that they could figure out how to cross. So Joe prayed to God and said, please give me the strength to get across this river. And God answered him by giving him strong arms and strong legs so that he could swim across the river. It took him a long time, and he struggled, but he made it. Dave, his buddy, saw this, and he prayed to God. He says, God, not, not only give me the strength, but give me the tools to cross this river. And God gave him a rowboat. And God gave him the strength. And after an hour, he was able to reach the other side. And Bob, too, saw what had happened to his friends, and so he prayed to God. He says, God, give me the strength and the tools and the intelligence to cross this raging river. And God answered his prayers. God turned Bob into a woman. She looked on at the map, hiked upstream a couple of yards, and walked across the bridge. I know all the ladies just are enjoying that, aren't you? <laughs> and don't, now, don't, men, don't get after me. You know, I'm one of you, so I'm... Each of them had a need. Each of them needed something in their life. Now, it's important for me in my life. I always think it's good to have a little laugh, a little chuckle. But even in the midst of all of that, there's a lesson to be learned. And the lesson is that God sent his son into the world and his mission was to die for us and rise again. Our mission is to be believers in Christ, to be servants of Christ. And we need to ask God for direction in our lives. So my prayer to God is for me and for you that God gives to all of us, no matter our age, the ability to drink in his word, the ability to be washed in God's love, the talent and the time to proclaim God's love to all. For you see, that is our mission. Amen.